Okay, Bodhi, you ready to do this thing? I am. Let's talk about Black Widow, okay? I'm excited for this set, and I'm excited particularly for... There's a couple of these Black Widows I think are going to be really good in draft, but there's one that I just think is so cool that uh, <laughs> I'm excited for you to see it. You've seen two of the four cards, right? Yes, I have. Okay, so I'm excited <clears throat> for you to see the, one of the ones you haven't seen. Uh, but several of these are good in draft. So let's start with a common. Do you want to read the uh, common for us? And we can talk about how that would be in draft. Definitely. Uh, so the common Black Widow has the uh, subtitle Space Gem, which is cool. Um, two cost Avengers affiliation. When mm -hmm. fielded, deal one damage to target sidekick. What are, and the stat line's not too bad either. For a two drop, it's like an 0 02 or an 012, 022, 123, right? So not too exactly. terrible of a stat line for a two drop. And I think it's a pretty solid little ability, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, sidekick control is huge right now with the fish splat teams and stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have, like, uh, Paul Heyman Global or um, what's the other global think of? Wand. Oh, um, yeah. For, you mean for KOing sidekicks? Yeah, you know, for those really quick fish slap teams. Yeah. <clears throat> and with Black Widow being a two cost and fielding costs and low defense like she's pretty easy to get off of the field that's a good point um, i didn't think about that yeah or even uh with the nile or global too Just and she feeds your and... masks that's a good point she it, feeds your masks yep. exactly so really good synergy with that type of ability and then uh even with the uh some good thematic here um using i think it's the hawkeye from avengers infinity set. oh yeah he's got a that bolt ah. global Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't think about the thematic connection there. Yeah, where T you can take out sidekicks. So um, hmm. that was the first thing I thought of, some of the ideas I got when I first saw this card, like just pinging off cool. sidekicks. I think she's solid in draft, too. I mean, because in draft, it's a low cost with fine stats. You don't have to pay anything to field her except on our level three side. And she's always doing something that's generally positive for you because you can target either your own sidekicks or your opponent's sidekicks, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So Definitely. if you're trying to push like board damage, which you are oftentimes doing in draft because you don't have like the sort of meta staple win conditions available to you, then this is just a way to do that. And if you want to ramp yourself, then this is just a way to do that. So this is a really solid pick in a draft scenario, I think. Yeah, I agree. Let's talk next about the super rare. And uh, I'll let you walk us through that super rare if you can see it all right on your end. Here it is. Here's the super rare for Black Widow. Uh, a little bit different than the common. It's a four cost. And it's got the Infinity Watch um, affiliation instead of the Avengers affiliation, which yep. I thought was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, intelligence assets. And that ability is when, while you have a fist in your reserve pool, Black Widow gets plus 2A. While you have three or more fists in your reserve pool, she get, gains an additional plus one attack. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think it's that terrible of an ability, but seeing that as a four cost, um, and what's the highest she'll get? A five here, three. Like a four five five. Yeah, she gets to a five three because she only gains attack. So on her right. top level, if she gains the plus three attack for having three fists. She's a 5-3, and that's her ability. She's a 4-drop four, yeah. four 5-3. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. That's, yeah, that's a little it's iffy. Kinda, you know, like. It's kind of not good, right? We, we can say that. Right. It's all right to say that. I mean, it's kind of sad that it's a super rare and that it's that way. I think the only thing that might True. save it is the possibility that there's some sort of synergy with Infinity Watch characters, right? Right. And yeah. So if that exists, then maybe this is kind of cool. In that sense, I don't know exactly. Um, the only thing that I could like really think to try and justify like testing with this or playing with this would be using like the Jerry Lawler Global. It's a fist, so you have the fist in your reserve anyway. That's a good and idea. She's gonna be a five three, and if she's gonna double damage if she goes in unblocked, or if you use like under surveillance or mm. get some over crush on her, she'll do some double damage. But if um, you have to pay the fist, the fist, then if you have to pay the yeah. fist, then you start to lose that ability kind of buff right exactly mm. so you start losing some fists there and stuff like that so yeah i try mm. to try and justify it but no i agree with you like four cost <laughs> yeah. five three on the top side at most and it's like damn you know i wish this could have been a little bit better as a super rare because you got 
Serena Super Rare Black Widow, which is the ultimate <laughs> yeah. Black Widow yeah. Super Rare. Yeah, so. you're not wrong. Would you take this in a draft? That's the question. Uh, depends. If uh, if I've already been through a draft and I'm like hunting for rares and super rare foils and stuff, yeah, I'd, I'd nab it up. But yep. if it's, it's my first draft and I had the choice between like this and the common or one of the other cards I haven't seen yet, I might jump at those instead and just be like, here's someone else going to have the super rare. Yeah, if uh, if it's a draft that matters... Like yeah. if you're playing yeah. for if you're playing for something important, then you might consider not drafting this just because uh, you you might have other uh, better options. Let's just put it that yeah. way. Bullseye, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of better options, let's look at one you have not seen yet. Let's look at the uncommon. Oh, I, can't I wait. think the uncommon is is pretty good. Now the uncommon I think has been spoiled previous to this. Maybe it was in the uh, maybe it was in the preview draft, but I think it has been spoiled. If my if my memory serves correct, this one has been. Spoiled, but you said you hadn't seen it, right? Right. No, I haven't seen the uncommon, or if there's a rare, I haven't seen that one either. So it's new to you. Here it is. You ready? I'm going to read it to I you. Am. This is All Black right. Widow running in the shadows. She's a three cost mask character with the Infinity Watch affiliation, and she has Overcrush oh. on a three drop. Hmm. And she says Black Widow may only be blocked by sidekicks. Oh. Man, so, that's actually not too bad. So here we have a three-drop overcrushing character. This is the I think this is the lowest they've ever printed overcrush, right? Um, as far as I can think, yes. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a three-drop overcrush. And I, the stat line isn't great for overcrush, right? Because you you're no. max out at like two attack without any other effects stacking on top of this, but. It has another like positive uh, ability on it that helps this uh, card's case by only being able to be blocked by uh, sidekick characters, right? Right. Which is pretty bonkers because all of our allies have officially rotated. <laughs> so literally yep. this is only blockable by sidekicks. So unless your opponent's bringing something to make their sidekicks beefier, this is generally not getting KO'd or it's generally um, just dealing over crush damage, you know? Right. That's I think this is really bad. good. Yeah, I mean, you get some, uh, you know, buffs to it or some global mm. buffs, and um, you could she can get big pretty quick depending on your team and what you're building around, and if she can only be blocked by sidekicks, um, you know, let's say she gets up to like a six or something, you know, I'm gonna have to use most of my sidekicks to block some of that coming through. If I'm already getting whittled down, you know, she can do. She's pretty versatile, I think, in that. Yeah. Fact. Definitely. Plus, if you think about it, you can just run like pump globals and not even worry about something like a Jerry Lawler or anything like that. Because right. if they don't block it with your with their sidekicks, they push like you just push natural pump damage, you know, and if they do block yep. it, then if you choose to run Jerry Lawler, you can flip it from then. But either way, if you're just running a pump global in general, this is all of a sudden just a really solid three drop, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would nab this up and draft right away too. Yeah, you know, I mean this. This, is this seems constructed level to a certain degree to me. I think so. I would like to play around with it. I think there's a lot out there that um, can definitely vibe very well with this card. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. That's a really cool one. But for me, this isn't actually my favorite card. My favorite oh. card's the rare. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. And you kind of mentioned it earlier to me. The rare is unspoiled up until now, yeah. so you're seeing this um, alongside of everybody else for the first time. And this one's pretty sweet, okay? Are you ready? All right. I, I'm a, ready, man. It's a two-drop, and it's called Ooh. Black Widow Widow's Hunt. It's, it's the rare. It's got the Infinity Watch um, affiliation. It says Energize, so that's going to trigger when you roll this on two masks. Spin target opposing character die down one level, and if that character die is already level one, you just spin it to an energy face of your choice. Wow. So that's cool. So it doesn't have any effect outside of being an Infinity Watch character if you field it, but this is literally just a two drop like action die almost, wherein it removes something from the field if it's level one. Which is super cool. I think yeah. this is so cool. 
that is a great again energize ability right that yeah I'm really excited to see the energize abilities that they're coming up with oh my especially gosh in this set too and a two cost too oh man and there's some Sign me up. yeah and there's some synergies built in with using uh energize effects or like stacking up or just things that play off of energize in this set that i think yep. have been spoiled and some that haven't been spoiled and this is just another thing that goes on the list of like, oh man, Energize is just getting super positive. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's a, isn't there a Star Lord or something that gets gives everyone like Energize? It's a recruit or something. Yeah, something keyword. like that. I don't remember. Or something. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I can't remember myself either. But this is like this is one of the reasons you would want to look for Energize Synergy because this yes. is a very easy to purchase, very easy to use generally always positive effect i mean even if it's not spinning something to an energy face this is spinning something down a level which may make it uh, more susceptible to multiples of these you know being in circulation because if you roll two of these on a turn then you spin mm -hmm. you know level two character down and then you spin level one character that was level two to an energy face so it's like super interesting removal yeah definitely it's a uh, very different removal from what we're used to seeing mm-hmm as far as just straightforward removal, this is a uh, very good use of your energy. Yeah. Uh, especially with the energize effect. And then uh, I'm thinking what, I think it's the rare, is, is it the rare Spider-Man? When you attack, you spin two opposing characters to energy faces? Yes, yeah. So if you're attacking with Spider-Man and then you got this energize, I mean, you could clearly get three characters out of the field but you got to be careful not to spin ones down to energy if they have static field and you don't have anything to combat that stuff like that. Yeah. But still, with that Spider-Man, with this Energize effect, that's effectively three character removal right there. Well, and thinking of this as a control piece, as, as sort of just like an action that you're using whenever you're rolling to do masks, this is actually really great removal for things that um, we're kind of seeing in the meta right now. Like you can remove stuff um, on your opponent's turn, or sorry, on your turn, um, like uh, Hope Summers before oh, yeah. moving to the exactly. attack step um, so they, they can't do like Hope Rachel combos. You can remove things and then send it to their use like um, Becky Lynch, right? So you can spin Becky Lynch down and then you don't actually have to deal with it at all on your opponent's next turn because it goes to used after spinning it to an energy phase, right? Exactly. Yeah. Another thing, uh, piggybacking off of that is Iceman. If you, they got an Iceman mm -hmm. out there, just well, bam, put it the uh, energy in. Yeah. But in fact, that's even that's worse for Iceman. You spin an Iceman yeah. down, and all of a sudden they don't have the same range of damage, right? Because that four six side or that three six side on level two and level three allows you a possible like twelve damage potential if you're trying to use like bolts and things to to deal right. the damage. But once it goes to a two four side. That just cuts it way down. Yeah, exactly, and it's easy. To, I mm. mean, I'm a, I'll say easily pinged off, but you can start dipping away on it, you know. Or yeah. if it's on its level one side, and now you you know spun it down to energy. Now they have to go through out of play, use pile back through the bag if they're mm -hmm. you know depending how good their bag management is. But you just messed up like their whole flow right there. Which, exactly. You know, I like uh, just some of these abilities that she has, and I think I. Uh, I think we talked about it earlier when we were talking about Black Widow that in every meta she seems to have a pretty strong ability in every meta almost. That's right. Um, you know, going all the way back to Gold Navy X to Agent, you know, like uh, Widow's Bite too. Yeah. So she always has an effect in the meta. I feel like that's that's an interesting point. And even even looking at what we have right now, we have Black Widow Agent, like you mentioned, versus um, Black Widow Widow's Bite. Which is the one that when you fielded buffs everything by plus one attack, right? Yeah, that's because those are because those are already prevalent. Adding more Black Widows just makes you go, man. I have to decide on using one of these, and there are <laughs> several great candidates. And then it's like a meta call, which is super exactly. cool. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool things that they've done. I think with the character of Black Widow over the years, and I think we're in that that moment for this specific character where it's going to be really interesting to see what makes it and what doesn't. You know. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. Oh, also, I should point out, this is totally a max three. Oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah. I just saw that. Yeah, it is interesting. I forgot to point that out when we were talking about the card. This is a max three. It's not a max four. So you, you only get to run three of these. 
Wow, it's even with the two costs, really. Well, no, no, no. Um, only oh, okay. only the uncommon. Only is a the max uncommon. Three. Okay, gotcha. So the win condition one is a max three. Everything else is a max yeah. four. You can buy four four costs that can be five threes <laughs> if you yeah. want that. There you go. <laughs> there yeah. it is. Well, that's interesting with the uh, three costs on that's uncommon. Well, thanks for hopping on with me and spoiling these cards. I'm excited to draft this set. I don't know about you. Yeah, I am too. Uh, the more I see some of these cards, the more um, excited I get just not only playing it within its uh, draft format, but like constructed and just mm -hmm. throwing it on some other teams and seeing where it goes with uh, some cards I might not have played around with yet that I really want to, and some yeah. might really uh, synergize with what's coming out yeah i think it's really going to change the meta once this set uh, drops i think it has to but particularly with this set this set is uh kind of meta defining i think yeah i feel like this is kind of like setting the bar with the future sets too agreed